Okay, in this video, let's add a little walk particle system to the player where when our player is walking in one direction, the particles will be emitted, kind of walking behind the player, indicating something of kicking up dust as the player runs around the screen to make things just a little more interesting. So in the gatherer game object, I'm going to jump into the prefab. And um, let's actually do that from the uh, project window so that we get the blue background. So gatherer under characters let's jump into gatherer prefab and inside of here let's um, add in the hierarchy a new game object so i'm going to right click and do create empty and then this i will call run particles so for this game object we need to have a particle system so add component particle system and uh, a lot of crazy things are probably going to happen right now so first off we don't want the particles to be pink. I'm actually going to stop the particle system for a second because that's kind of blinding. And we need to go down to renderer so that we can set a material that we're actually going to be emitting for the particles. So inside of gatherer's exterior, I have a tiny little particle um, that I'm using for this. And this is basically just some very, very simple pixel art. And we can turn that into a material like exists right here. By right-clicking on the PNG of the particle we want to create a material for, going to Create Material, and then we can call this something like Material Pixel Particle, as I've, as I've already automatically done up there. And then we can change this to, uh, let's say, Particles, Standard Unlit, and then you just need to drag the particle into this map here, the albedo map. And then we can use this material in our particle emission. So if you click on Run Particles, go down to the bottom here and just drag in that material to here. If we hit Play, then now you can see uh, that the particles are emitting something that's not just pink missing material. However, uh, we can't really see any of the shape of the particle. So let's click on the Material Particle. And instead of Opaque for the rendering mode, you want Cutout. OK, now if we click on Particles and Play, then you'll see the actual shape of the particles that we're trying to emit. Now, those are way bigger than the player. So I'm going to take the size and I'm going to make it a lot smaller. So let's try. Uh, OK, one is one unit, which is 100 pixels. So let's try to make it something like 0 0.04 units for 0 point, for four pixels as its size. OK, so we can still see they sort of have the shape still, uh, which is good. But they're at a size which is more appropriate for our character. The velocity is also way too much, so let's play around with the settings a little bit. I'm going to take the start speed, and I'm going to make that more like 0.2. Okay, so now our particles are much smaller. Also, they're emitting in random directions and automatically emitting. Uh, so the automatic emission is fine for right now, but to change that to be based on when the character is walking, we would want the rate over time to be zero and the rate over distance to be set to something else. Uh, basically, how many particles do you want per unit of distance in that case? So for right now, we'll leave the rate over time uh, uh, active just so we can see what we're doing. Uh, but we're going to need to change some things. So first off, the lifetime of the particle, I want that to be much less. I'll make that 0 0.5 seconds. And then you'll see a lot of the particles just kind of disappear from the screen um, since they're fading away much faster now. And we also want them to be emitted from here, not in this random circle. So we can go to shape and change the shape of where the particles are emitted. I'm going to change the shape to a circle. And then I'm going to shrink the radius of the circle a lot. So this will basically put it uh, right on top of where the character is walking at any given time. So it could even be something like a 0 0.04 radius, which means it'll be an 8 pixel diameter circle. And I think that works OK. Uh, the only thing now is that we want to make sure that the speed is in the uh, right direction. So for that, I think you need inherit velocity to inherit the velocity of the uh, parent. So I want the velocity to actually be a negative value. So I'll take the initial velocity of the parent when the particle is emitted, and I'm going to put it at uh, negative 0 0.25. So we're going to be reversing the direction and slowing it by a factor of 4. I uh, can't tell that right now because the speed is uh, basically being determined by that automatic speed. So if you want the base speed to be eliminated, then just change the start speed to 0. And now all of the velocity is going to be dependent on whatever the character's speed is 
when uh, the particles are emitted. So right now it's just generating particles. The character's not moving, so it makes sense that they're not having their own velocity. So to change that, uh, once we're done with all those steps, we just change the rate of emission to zero uh, for over time. And then for distance, we can say something like, um, I, I think it's per unit of game space. So I'm going to put 50, which means 50 particles per one unit. Uh, that seems kind of high. Let's try 10 to start. And uh, let's go back out to the main scene. If we expand our gatherer, we can see that the run particle system is there. Let's hit play and see what we get. So if I hit play, uh, we can see the particles get emitted when I run. So if I stop running, there's no particles. Uh, but they're not moving very much. So maybe we need to increase the values on the run particle system. So I can just click run particles here while the game's running. And we can change the values and just test things. So let's do um, inherit velocity. And I'll do negative 1 instead of negative 0.25. And so the particles are actually moving with the player right now. So another setting you got to change is uh, simulation space to world. So this will mean that the particles are going to have their own, basically, movement and transform. They don't move with the parent. They are, in a sense, kind of like their own objects. So the particles aren't their own game object, but they do have a space within the world. So that's going to help us fix that there. So if you exit out of play mode, note that the settings go back to what they were before. So let's um, jump into the prefab and make simulation space world. Inherit velocity, we can leave that um, maybe negative 0.5. And emission, I think 10 was working good. So let's hit play and test that again. Okay, that's looking good. So you'll notice that because we have the negative velocity multiplier, that the particles go in the opposite direction from where we are. So this is already working pretty good. Things we could change would be fading the particles out as time goes on. Uh, that's an option. I think it already looks pretty good as it is right now. But if you want that kind of thing, then uh, we can go to run particles in the prefab outside of uh, play mode, of course. And let's change the color over lifetime. So if we go in here, you can click on this gradient editor. And right now it's going from pure white to pure white with full alpha. So if you click at the top notches, those are going to control the alpha, the transparency, and the bottom one is going to control the actual color. So if you click on the top one, turn the alpha down to uh, zero or something like that, which means it's going to fade out over time. We can hit play and test that. And you'll see that uh, they kind of appear to fade much quicker now um, since those parts would be transparent. So if you want it to be more of a rapid fade rather than fading over time. You can add a third notch and just pull this in over here, set it to 255. So between these two points of the lifespan, it's going to be completely um, visible. And then it's going to very quickly drop to zero alpha now. So if we hit play, it's going to look a little different here. You can see that there's a little bit more time where the particles are visible before they fade out. But they, they do last for such a small period of time that you only see them for a few frames of animation, too. I think I can see the transparency fading on, like, the last frame where they're visible. But it's uh, it's still kind of a subtle difference there. So that's basically setting up the walk particles for our character. And that's going to be it for this video.